Hello, saints, peace, love, and grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you today. I hope everybody's having a blessed day out there. So far, we've seen the creation of the Jewish believers, also known as the little flock, all the Jewish believers under Peter and the remaining 11 apostles. We've seen how God gives the apostles power from on high through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, performing signs, miracles and wonders and healing the sick and curing diseases and so on. God gives Israel one last chance by extending his mercy for an extra year after the ascension. And we saw how this extension was explained in the parable of the fig tree back in the book of Luke. Now, the year extension has gone by. It's time for the nation of Israel to make up their minds. Either they obey the Holy Spirit or they deny the Holy Spirit, speaking through the prophet Stephen. And what did they do? They denied the Holy Spirit once again for the last time by killing Stephen and the game is over. For now, Israel has finally fallen, has fallen and we're introduced for the first time this educated Pharisee, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a law-minded Jew named Saul of Tarsus. We learn why Jesus was standing instead of sitting when Stephen saw him up in glory, and we learn the difference between hypo-grace dispensationalism and hyper-grace dispensationalism. Just another tactic to discredit those of us who rightly divide and actually understand what God's Word is saying. It's all about jealousy and pride. We saw what part Saul played in the killing of Stephen, the fall of Israel after this year's extension, and we learned who the Sumerians were, the meaning of the word simony, deriving from Simon the magician trying to buy the Holy Spirit. And once again, all we see is the gospel of the kingdom before Paul's conversion, prior to the creation of the body of Christ. We investigated what a eunuch is and the fact that they make great soprano singers in the opera. And we saw the rapture being used on Philip for the first time in the New Testament, taking him over miles and miles away in the flash of a second. And finally, it's important to keep in mind that the kingdom gospel is still going strong at this point. But Jesus is about to reveal to Paul, this Hebrew of Hebrews, this Pharisee, this angry, angry Jewish teacher and educated person. He's a, Jesus is about to reveal to him a mystery that will change the world. A mystery that's all about grace. Actually, 2,000 years worth of grace. As we begin, Paul just finished helping to kill the prophet Stephen. Also, two things we'll be keeping track of for the rest of the book of Acts. First thing is the date. We'll be tracking the date as we follow Paul's ministry from beginning to end. Second thing is the location. We'll be tracking the locations that Paul travels to. Both time and date and location are very two important tools that we'll be using to understand this transition from the kingdom gospel to Paul's grace gospel or the mystery revealed. You can also look at this as transitioning from the dispensation of the kingdom to the dispensation of grace. So where are we at this point in our study? Well, the date is one year after the ascension. It's approximately 31 AD and we're still in Jerusalem. It's important to note that some time has gone by since Stephen's death. At least three years has passed by. Then the scene opens up again in Acts chapter nine with Saul of Tarsus. And during this three year period, there's massive amounts of persecution of the little flock, the Jewish believers. They're being imprisoned and being martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ as being their Messiah. Now in Acts chapter 9, in the King James Version Bible, of course, in verse 1, And Saul, 
yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, this way here being the believing remnant, okay, this movement that they were in, uh, believing in Jesus Christ, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Now, we're in 34 AD. Keep that in mind. Paul is on his way to Damascus. In verse 3, And as he, Paul, journeyed, he came near Damascus. He wasn't quite there yet. And suddenly there shined right round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he, Paul, said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, Paul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, the city of Damascus. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For, behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales. And he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, food, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Now in verse 19, there is a period of time here that Luke doesn't record. Actually, there's a period of time that is approximately three years worth of time. From the time when Ananias and Paul were together, Paul receives his sight, something happens next. And we see that by reading Galatians. In Galatians 1 verse 15, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his, name, his grace, this is Paul speaking, Paul's not talking about his literal mother here. He's talking about Judaism. The woman, as we know, is Israel. So when Paul says he was separated from his mother's womb, he's saying God took him out of the Pharisee world of Israel, the Mosaic law dispensation, 
and put him in this new dispensation of grace. Here we see the creation of the body of Christ, our dispensation, the mystery hid within God since before the foundation of the world. Verse 16, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, which are Gentiles, immediately I confer not with the flesh and blood. He didn't talk with anyone. He took some time alone to ponder everything that Jesus revealed to him, this great mystery. Verse 17, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were the apostles before me, but I went into Arabia. He went south and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Okay, so let's put this all on a simple timeline. Paul gets converted in Damascus. He goes to Arabia for some time. Then he returns back to Damascus. Now keep in mind, Paul is preaching the death of burial and resurrection of Christ Jesus during this time. We see a shift from the kingdom gospel to the mystery gospel of grace. So now we're looking at a year right around 35 to 36 AD, approximately four or five years after stoning Stephen. Jesus reveals massive amounts of information which was previously kept secret to the Apostle Paul over this period of time. We see that in Romans 16, verse 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, this is Paul speaking, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. In Galatians 1, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, Neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we continue on in verse 20 of Acts, And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Now, one of the most used methods that Paul would use back then to prove to the Jews that Jesus was in fact their Messiah was by going through the Old Testament scriptures, especially scriptures such as Isaiah 53 in verse 21 but all that heard him were amazed and said is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name of Jesus in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might bring them bound unto the chief priest but Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him, to kill Paul. But their laying await was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him, and believed not that he was a disciple. Now we're in the year right around 37 AD. Some time has gone by. Verse 27, But Barnabas took him, and brought him to the apostles, and declared unto them now he had seen how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus, and disputed against their Grecians. But they went about to slay him. Who are the Grecians again? We went over this a couple days ago. The Grecians are Greek-speaking Jews. In verse 30, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. So after Paul declares to a few of the apostles how he had talked to Jesus, how Jesus revealed to him a secret, 
the plan to turn from the Jews towards the Gentiles, this caused a huge uproar amongst the Jews. And one thing that would have upset both the believing and non-believing Jews is for Paul to tell them that God was completely turning to the Jews, uh, Gentiles, from the Jews to the Gentiles. And this caused all kinds of fighting and all kinds of contention within the Jewish community. So the apostles decide it's best to send Paul far away to Tarsus. This is where Paul was born, Saul of Tarsus. And Tarsus is a Roman city. It's filled with Gentiles. And this is where Paul is preaching the gospel of grace for the next 10 years. Paul's in the middle of a Roman Gentile city for 10 years. And he's going to be preaching to both Jews and Gentiles while he's there. He'll be preaching the gospel of grace, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the reason why there's Jews in Tarsus is because of the persecution taking place in Jerusalem. They scattered all throughout Asia, Galatia, and Greece, and Rome, and Macedonia. And during these 10 years, from 38 AD to 48 AD, Paul will be living in a predominantly heathen Gentile Roman city of Tarsus, where Paul was born. Paul was a Jew born in Roman territory. He had Roman citizenship. And Paul is quickly put before the Gentiles. That's the whole plan. Just like Jesus told him that he would do. Paul will be preaching the revelation of the mystery, the gospel of grace, the dispensation of grace, to the Gentiles and Jews in the city of Tarsus for over 10 years. And we're starting to see a shift here from the kingdom gospel to the gospel of grace. The kingdom gospel at this time is dominant, and the revelation of the mystery through Paul is just starting out. And yesterday I explained this transition by using this chart you see in front of you on the screen. If you look at the chart on the screen, you see the green line at the top left. This is Peter's gospel of the kingdom. The orange line at the bottom is Paul's gospel of grace. And as we move from left to right, imagine it's the number of years. We're progressing through time, okay? As we progress over the remaining years in Acts, from left to right, the kingdom gospel declines and Paul's gospel increases. And as they get closer together, meeting in the middle is a small window of time where you'll see an apparent mixing of both gospels. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by mixing of both gospels? In this small window of time, you'll see Paul speaking in tongues, healing the sick, baptizing some Jews. There's a short period of time here when the two Gospels are happening simultaneously. But as we move further in time towards the right, Peter's Gospel of the Kingdom continues to decline, and Paul's Gospel of Grace continues to increase. And what, the, what that does is this, it starts to separate the two Gospels. Also, it begins to reduce Paul's abilities in tongues, in healings, and he stops baptizing altogether. And finally, at the end of 30 plus years or so, Paul's gifts have come to a complete stop. And Peter's kingdom gospel comes to a complete end, or a pause for 2,000 years. So, we can see why Paul was first healing, performing signs and wonders, and so on, but that all ends with the ending of the kingdom gospel. Like I said, the gospel of the kingdom will pause completely for 2,000 years and it's going to start up again after the rapture occurs. You see, you have to end one to begin another. So when the, when the rapture occurs, it's going to completely stop the dispensation of grace, the mystery gospel, Paul's gospel, and another one's going to begin Okay, God's going to press play again. And when he presses play, he's going to leave off where he left off with the stoning of Stephen. Now, while Paul is preaching to the Jews and Gentiles in Tarsus during this time, there's a lot going on back in Jerusalem with this little flock. Tens of thousands of Jewish believers, 
the ministry of the 12 apostles. And keep in mind, this little window of time where the body of Christ and the little flock are, are working side by side, there's a transition going on. And that's what the book of Acts is all about. The book of Acts is the, it, it, this is the reason why Acts is so important to understand. We see Paul's conversion on the road to Damascus. He goes to Arabia for a couple years. He comes back to Damascus, preaches to the Jews there in Damascus, and he goes on to Jerusalem. Then he heads to Gentile heathen territory in Roman Tarsus to preach to both Jews and Gentiles. This is the new program, the new dispensation of grace. The mystery gospel of grace revealed to him alone by Jesus Christ over the past four years. So for the remaining verses into the next few chapters, Luke is writing about what's going on with this little flock while Paul is preaching in Tarsus to the Gentiles. There's two different Gospels being preached at the same time, but there's a distance in between these Gospels. Paul is in Tarsus. The Apostles are in Jerusalem. Because we're, we're, we're in this little window of time that I was, I was talking about earlier. So there's a lot of activity taking place during these 10 years. In Acts, in, back to Acts 9, verse 31, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Again, the word churches here is the word ecclesia. It simply means an assembly of believers. This isn't the body of Christ here, okay? That's important to understand. Whenever you see the word churches, it doesn't mean it's us. It doesn't mean it's today. It just means it's the word, the Greek word ecclesia, which means an assembly of believers. In verse 32, And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda. If you look at the map in front of you, notice where Jerusalem is, and then Caesarea, and Gaza, and Lydda, and Tarsus, and Antioch. That's why I have this map in front of us. We're going to start using this a lot so we can follow the scripture, making it easier for the puzzle pieces to come together for us as we study. Verse 33, And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately. Now, did Peter preach the death, burial, and resurrection to this Aeneas? No. Peter's still preaching the kingdom gospel here. And the man was healed. And we talked about this in the past studies. What was one of the reasons why God allowed the kingdom saints to be healed? Simply, it's because they needed to be kept alive and well so they can endure till the end, making it to the second coming. That's one reason why the power of healing was given to the apostles. In verse 35, And all that dwelt at Lydda and Saren saw him and turned to the Lord. It was a powerful witness to see someone healed right on the spot. It was a great testimony to the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of Jesus Christ. Verse 36. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. She did a lot of good works. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them, and when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down 
and prayed and turning him to the body said Tabitha arise and she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter she sat up and he gave her his hand and lifted her up and when he had called the saints and the widows presented her alive resurrection of the dead will become once again a reality during Daniel's 70th week again to keep the remnant to inherit the coming kingdom of heaven on the earth the promised earthly kingdom for Israel the 12 tribes of Jacob verse 42 and it was known throughout all Joppa and many believed in the Lord and it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon a tanner now the important thing to take from all of this is like we discussed earlier during the first stages of Paul's gospel there was a mixing of sorts of two gospels the kingdom and grace prophecy and mystery Peter and Paul and Paul was in the middle of these signs and wonders all these healings tongues and even still water baptism was taking place for the little flock the Jews and the kingdom gospel repent be baptized for the remission of sins and endure till the end that's the kingdom gospel the kingdom program is coming to a close slowly but surely while the mystery program is growing in strength and taking over so we'll see in our study a diminishing of these signs and these wonders and an increasing of the dispensation of grace salvation by faith alone without having to endure till the end and there's a lot that happened during these 10 years while Paul was in Tarsus okay while he was up there in heathen Roman Gentile territory preaching to both Jews and Gentiles this new gospel this new revelation that he had learned straight from the mouth of Jesus Christ our Lord he was busy doing that for 10 years over that period of time so from 37 AD to 38 AD there's a lot that happened okay and also from 38 AD all the way to 48 AD over those 10 years there's very much that happened first we have Herod Antipas deposed by Caligula and exiled to Gaul second thing that happened is Caligula was murdered third thing Claudius declared the emperor he was emperor and then the fourth thing that happened during that time was there's a great famine that came across Rome another thing Roman campaigns all over the place against Britain and then we have the death of Herod Agrippa the first and we're going to be getting into more of what Peter and the Apostles did during those 10 years that when Paul was in Tarsus in the next chapter in chapter 10 so we'll be seeing a lot of this activity taking place while the kingdom gospel is coming to a close and Paul's grace gospel is increasing one is for the Jews alone the other is for both Jews and Gentiles you see that part of the mystery was that God would create a body of believers of both Jews and Gentiles there's no more separation the veil of separation was removed that was part of the mystery revealed to Paul so until then peace love grace Christ Jesus be with all of you Lord willing I'll see you on the next video